The Steam Deck just celebrated its two year birthday and the Steam Deck OLED was released just a few months ago. Somehow though, people still seem to feel like the Steam Deck is showing its age thanks to an APU that some of those people would claim is from 2020. Whether or not you consider the Steam Deck old or showing its age is probably a function of how much you think of the Steam Deck as a console or a PC. I've always thought of the Steam Deck as more as a console, and I've been very vocal about that. Yes, it does have the freedom of a PC, but the price tag is subsidized thanks to Steam Store sales. The user experience is uniquely focused towards gaming, and the limited SKUs allow there to be predictability around the performance and compatibility for any given game. Likewise, this is also why I've been very vocal about us not needing a Steam Deck 2 anytime soon. I think that to a degree we've gotten accustomed to the Steam Deck and now just two years later, it feels like we take for granted how groundbreaking it was. For starters, it was a gaming PC that was broadly available for $400. Until the Steam Deck, that felt like a pipe dream. Sure, some people were able to build themselves a modest rig for four to $500, but it usually involved reusing parts from an older rig and it also involved work, whether that was the work of shopping around for parts or the work of putting the machine together in the first place. With the Steam Deck, you can spend $400 and sleep soundly with the knowledge that it'll play a broad range of games in your Steam library, even if it's not always going to be the best machine for the latest high fidelity games. Of course, that's all before you even get to the fact that the Steam Deck is a handheld PC. It of course was not the first handheld PC, GBD and Ionia already had a few of these under their belt, but as someone that had a handheld PC prior to the Steam Deck, I can say that the concept was extremely niche and the price tag was too steep for the average buyer. Also, let me just say, I am uniquely qualified to judge the Steam Deck against APUs that actually came out in 2020, and as much as I loved my GPD Win Max back then, the Steam Deck is a generational leap ahead of the APU that was in that machine. And that's why Valve is simply not done with the Steam Deck in its current state. I mean, obviously, right? They've talked about possibly doing more limited edition Steam Decks, so maybe we'll see more colorways. But as far as the Steam Deck 2 goes, they've made it clear time and time again that they want another generational leap with Steam Deck 2. The Z1 Extreme and the 8840U are not a big enough leap for Valve to consider at this point. And honestly, whether or not they're a leap at all, I kind of find to be subjective. There's no doubt that the ROG Ally has a higher ceiling in terms of pushing more pixels at a faster clip, but it is considerably worse than the Steam Deck OLED at power efficiency. Listen, if you're someone that doesn't care about power efficiency, I absolutely respect your choice and your preference. I think that you should care about what's important to you and you should spend your money based on that. But do you know what's my most played game of 2024 so far? It's not Dragon's Dogma 2, it's not Tekken 8, hell it's not even Helldivers 2 or Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. My most played game of 2024 and by a wide margin is Bellatro, a super lo-fi 2D turn-based game. Look, last week I went on a trip and it was about a four hour flight. Mind you, my son has been hooked on Bellatro too. So we both end up playing this game for the entire flight. He's traveling with the ROG Ally in case he wants to play Minecraft and I'm traveling with the OLED deck. I set him to 10 watt silent mode before the trip began, but I gotta be honest, he may have mistakenly set it back to 15 watts or something because by the time I got the low battery notification, I still had 75% battery life on the Steam Deck OLED. I let him plug into my 12,000 milliamp hour battery pack, which was at full charge. And by the time he exhausted that too, I was only down to 57%. Basically, I was able to get 4X battery life on the deck compared to the ROG Ally. This is not me trying to dog the Ally. I think it's a great machine. It just doesn't work for my lifestyle as well as the Steam Deck OLED does. Of course, if I didn't have the Steam Deck, I'd be loving me some ROG Ally. Let me give another example. On that same trip, while we were all disconnected from Wi-Fi, all of a sudden, Bellatro stopped working for my son. It kept saying something about not being able to create an OpenGL window. This was strange because it was working on the flight and now it wasn't working while we were in our hotel room, but we didn't download anything, we didn't install anything, nothing should have changed. So I started to Google and everything is pointing to bad drivers, which again, makes no sense because we didn't download or install any updates. But Okay, fine. I downloaded a fresh driver package, which took longer than I would have liked on hotel Wi-Fi. I installed that. I restarted a few times, made sure everything was up to date. And yes, I got it all working. I was the hero for my son. 
But I kept thinking back to this one comment I received on a video once. It said, it's funny to me that people in this hobby are major tinkerers, yet they all cry about how hard it is to use a Windows handheld device and just want the simplicity of something like SteamOS. It feels a bit backwards to me. You know, I don't begrudge this comment. We all have our preferences, but I don't know. I'm a software developer by day and I don't really call myself a major tinkerer. Others may call me that. I really do not know. The point is my time is limited. I don't play several hours a day. I play 30 to 60 minute sessions at a time and I don't want to use that time to troubleshoot or tinker. I want to use that time to play. So instead of getting to play Bellatro, my son and I both had to wait 20 to 30 minutes of our vacation time, either troubleshooting, installing updates, or just waiting. And I don't know if it's just me. I think that's lame. And going back to what I was saying earlier, I think that it's all something we take for granted now. Gaming on PC is much more convenient than it was 10 years ago. And that was much more convenient than PC gaming 20 years ago. But somehow gaming on Steam Deck is an order of magnitude even more convenient in my opinion. One of the first reviews for the Steam Deck was from my friend The Fox, and he called the Steam Deck a sequel to PC or PC2. I think that's the exact right way to think of it. The Steam Deck was such a leap forward in PC gaming that it could rightfully be called the PC2. That is what I want from the Steam Deck 2. I want it to have the same leap forward that the Steam Deck did. I want the Steam Deck 2 to be PC3. Maybe, maybe that's unrealistic. Maybe. But if I stopped you in 2020 and I told you that I want a $400 PC gaming handheld that would run most games using a bespoke Linux distro and that I wanted to emulate Switch games, often better than the Switch itself, and I wanted to have trackpads and gyros such that I can play first person shooters with more accurate aim than I can on console, and, and I wanted to sell multiple millions of units so that a community bands around it to make awesome plugins, software, accessories, video guides, and more? Well, you would have called me unrealistic then too. It's okay to be unrealistic. I mean, imagine, imagine it's 2015 and I predicted that Sony would be bringing most of its first party games to PC, including God of War and Spider-Man. That would be unrealistic. If I told you two months ago that Microsoft was bringing first party games to PlayStation and Switch, you would have said that's unrealistic too. And if I told you that Microsoft was flirting with the idea of bringing storefronts like Epic Game Store and Steam to the Xbox, of course, you would have said I'm being unrealistic. I really want to dispel this notion that we have to be realistic with what we want. I want to be ambitious and grandiose, and I hope that Valve feels the same way. I really hope Valve is not sitting around thinking they should release a Steam Deck 2 with a slightly more powerful APU and be like, yeah, that's cool. So what would the Steam Deck 2 look like if we were being completely unrealistic? I've talked about how I would like to see a Steam Deck set top box, you know, a Steam machine. In my mind, I kept thinking that it would be cool if Valve could release a gaming PC that was as powerful as a PS5 and similarly priced. A lot has changed since 2013 and a Steam machine could still be interesting, but I realized I was thinking too small. I was being too realistic. So what would be better than that? Well, let's assume that the Steam Deck 2 is obviously a handheld and it already has a good leap forward in terms of power without losing its advantage over other handhelds in power efficiency. But what if, what if you could dock that Steam Deck 2 using Oculink and then imagine if Valve separately sold a dock with an eGPU that they designed together with say AMD the same way they helped design the Van Gogh APU that is inside the Steam Deck now. We're talking at least a year or two in the future, so I mean, imagine a hybrid that is more powerful than the RG Ally when it's on the go and more powerful than the PS5 when it's plugged into a TV. Ideally, Valve can still subsidize the price knowing once again that they're gonna sell a bunch of Steam games. But Rich, I hear you saying, that's not very unrealistic of you. We have handhelds with Oculink now. Yeah, I agree, but I think one of the differentiators here is that we're talking about a specific eGPU. So something like a single SKU or an extremely limited number of SKUs just like the Steam Deck. And again, let's not forget the Steam Deck wasn't the first PC handheld either. Likewise, the price point would be important and I hope that it's something that could be more affordable to the type of person that buys consoles. Finally, I would look to Valve to build a more seamless experience than what we have today. Something that can gracefully handle docking and undocking with an external graphics card. To be honest, it's not really possible today. 
but Valve has already done a few things that I considered to be not possible before, like having robust sleep and resume functionality on PC, not to mention that they got Linux gaming to the state that it's in today. But you know what? I agree with you. I'm not being unrealistic enough. So what if we finally also get that wireless VR headset that Valve has been secretly prototyping, the Deckard? Something that can work with the Steam Deck 2, whether it's in handheld or docked mode. Maybe you can play VR Thumper or Tetris Effect in handheld mode, but you'll need to switch to docked if you want to properly play something like Resident Evil Village VR mode. And going back to docked mode altogether, there's one thing I didn't talk about at all, and that's a controller. Sure, you can use an Xbox controller, but a lot of people have been clamoring for a Steam controller too, and rightfully so. It could be something that once again makes the docking experience even more seamless than some random third-party controller. Obviously, the Lenovo Legion Go has robust detachable controllers, just like the Joy-Cons on the Nintendo Switch, and maybe that's something we'll see from Valve's next handheld. Either way, I kind of envision a Steam Deck ecosystem that includes a handheld, a dock with an eGPU, a new Steam controller, and a new VR headset. But I think to really reach its full potential, Valve's gonna need one more thing. Global retail presence. On that flight I was on, I still had someone ask me, what is that, some type of Nintendo Switch? As popular as the Steam Deck is, it still pales in comparison to the popularity of the Switch and other home consoles. It's always going to be an uphill battle, but it doesn't help that you can't just buy this thing or try this thing in your local Target or Best Buy. I think if people could see it and try it in a store kiosk, that would generate even more interest. Whether or not any of this will come to fruition, who knows? Humans are notoriously bad at predicting things, so I think it's safe to say that if I were to predict most of this were going to happen, I would be wrong. But I think it's more fun to imagine the grandiose than to just look for Valve to turn out a new model every two years. What do you think? Either way, I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you're having a wonderful week decking out. Goodbye.